Okay, so on the first page of your lab objective, you're supposed to know the histological plan. So what that means is any slide in any model would have the same layers in it. So this is the same layers as the respiratory system. We just add one. So on this weird model, which we do not own, but it's a good one for example, up here, the white space, that would be where the food lives. So what do you call the white space where food is? Lumen. Lumen, same as the airway in your air in your airway, right? So what would you call from here to here, the part touching the lumen? Mucosa, because it's touching the lumen. What would you call the area from here to here below the mucosa? How about that? Now this is new. This is new for digestion. What are these two things? Muscularis externa, because we have to shove and push the food around. So you have mucosa, submucosa, now you add a muscularis external to the light table. And at the very bottom, down here, number 14, serosa or adventitia. So you're going to have the same layers you learned two weeks ago, just adding the muscularis externa. You're supposed to add a little more. Let's figure out. On our muscularis externa, except for stomach, they all have two layers within it. This one here, labeled 12A. What is 12A? Circular layer or circularis, you'll hear people say. I should say... Layer. So there's a circular layer that squeezes the food. 12B must be what? A longitudinal. So everything is going to have a circular longitudinal except for a stomach, which adds one layer in addition, which we'll get to. You're going to have your lumen, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa made of two, and adventitia. Make sense? Okay, so every slide, every model will basically have the same parts. So be able to find those layers on any model or slide I give you. Right? Let's go and find some mouth parts to name. These should be reviewed from two weeks ago. But maybe they're not. Of course, Biology 112 was a review. We learned about that, right? Okay, so everything on the list is pretty much what you had with breathing, except for a few here. What do you call those things in English? Labia, Labia means lip and doctor speak. Okay, you can't see them on the model, but where are your frenulum? Frenulae. Yeah, those, those little, the septa that separate that. Where's a vestibule? Between your, your cheek and gum, where your Copenhagen goes. That space where you put your chew. Right? It's the entrance way. Okay, for the arches and stuff, there's a poster in the back you want to take a look at that shows you the arches. You have to look in someone's mouth to see the arch. You can't see it on this. But we can see the glands. So I'm going to take this head, make it a little different, and we're going to look at some salivary glands. Look at a celebrate glands. Here we go. Tell me number 68. Parotid. Parotid, very good. Paraotic literally means by your ear. That's the one when you bite a lemon, you'll feel that contract. So there's going to be one, number 70, at the corner of your jaw. Submandibular. Submandibular. And then there would be one under your tongue, which is not shown on this model. What would you call one under the tongue? Sublingual. So there's always three salivary glands. Parotid, submandibular, sublingual, kind of like that. Make sense? So those you'd have to see new. You know about the pharynx, you know about the, all that, you know the tonsils. So we're just going to scroll down to the esophagus and the stomach. Let's go find an esophagus and a stomach. Shall we? Where's my favorite model? Okay, so the esophagus is above number two. So we're going to focus on the stomach. <laughs> so, tell me about, oh, area three. Cardiac. What would you call that? Cardiac, Cardiac region, because it's near your heart to some Roman somewhere. <laughs> All right? Number eight, this little area right here. Fundus. Fundus, one of my favorite words, the Bay of Fundi. It's poochy. That's what that means. It's kind of a poochy out part. All right? So, eight is your fundus. You have fun with your fundus. Tell me about number, oh, nine. Body. Body means the middle. Okay, number 11, pyloric region, so it's near your sphincter, this is the sphincter, so anywhere from about here to here you can call the pyloric region, it's the end of the stomach, so cardiac's the beginning, if you follow the food, this is the end, right? So which one would be the sphincter? Number two and 12. Well, two is the lower esophageal sphincter, good. And number 12 would be the polar sphincter. They just show it like that. Right. So let's do some curvature. Let's do number 14. 
greater curvature. Big Ben, literally, if you do it in Latin. So therefore, number six must be the lesser. lesser. So you get a big and little. The same wording goes to the next two. You have an omentum. There are two. There's one that hangs off the greater one as an apron over your intestines. That would be the greater omentum. There's one that comes up from this one to your liver. That would be the lesser omentum. So this doesn't show the omenta. But they would be greater and lesser. There's only one model which is back over there that shows the omentum. Okay, hmm, number, let's find some. Number 15, my favorite word. Brugge. guaranteed to be on your quiz. The bumps and folds in your stomach. And you can't see kind, I hope, right? Is that for absorption purposes or... Stretch out your stomach. So as your stomach fills, they flatten and compress. Are you saying that the lesser omentum then is like the bottom of the stomach and the greater yes. omentum is below? Yes. Yes. That would be how I do it. So the rugae is like wrinkles? Wrinkles, folds, okay. however you want to phrase it. Is that different from mesentery? Yes. Mesentery is within the intestinal folds. It's, it's holding the intestines as a big lump. But this would hang over them as an apron. Okay. So you have an apron and a mesentery. Omentum and mesentery. Does the rugae help with Yes, a little bit. So they help. That's just a muscle in there. So let's zip on down to small intestine. We'll just finish the big models first here. So tell me about starting here to there. What is that? Duodenum or duodenum. You can say either way. It's okay. The first bend of your small intestine. I'm going to zoom in on a different model here. It should be this one. Yeah. So if you look at 491... This bend would be what I call the bottom. So that first kind of curve. Then there's a middle section which they removed here. What was the middle section? Jejunum. And the last part, number 521, would be the ileum. So you have duodenum, jejunum, and ileum are the three parts of your small intestine. Right? So we're going to find a few things in there. So let me go back here. Okay, this is showing a close-up of just the duodenum. Your stomach would be here. Jejunum's over here. And I want you to look at this number 18 right there. If I click on number 18, it should get bigger. I did this one. There's a close-up of number 18. There's a hole there, a bump. What do you call that bump at number 18? Indeed, major duodenal papilla, meaning big duodenum bump. That's your big duodenum bump. And there's a sphincter there. What do you call the sphincter at the bump? Pancreatic. pancreatic sphincter of Odi. So literally, liver pancreas valve. Because this is where your liver and your pancreas dump their solutions. That's not a sphincter we talked about in class about the food tube. There's a sphincter to control the liver and pancreas putting their fluids in the small intestine. So that's a major hepato, major duodenal papilla with the hepatopancreatic sphincter. Right, so I go back. Right here is that little thing, and this is my pancreas and liver dumping stuff into my small intestine. That's only in the duodenum. So we need to know, yes? The, so the papilla is just like a little bump, and then there's the uh, sphincter in, in that bump. Right. So that the bump. bump has nothing, or has everything to do with this. Okay. Yeah, so if I just pointed to them and I didn't specify, you could put either name. Okay. If I say the bump, you want the papilla. If I say the sphincter, you want the sphincter. The mini man right there on the counter, he has a very good papilla. You can see it from a mile away with your phone. So you want to look at his papilla. Papillum. So let's go down a little further. Let's go down to ileum. There's some things you have to find in my ileum. Which is... Oh, there's one I meant. I forgot about that one. Number 520 you're going to name for me. All at once now. A, that's an ileocecal valve because it's my ileum. That's my cecum, and that's the valve between the two, or ileocecal sphincter, my ileocecal valve. All right. Then we're going to name one more thing, which are the little bumps and folds you see in the intestine. So let's go back, and let's look at this one again. These little ridges you see in the intestines, those are not rugae. What are those? Plica circularis, or plica circularis. So those are plica these are rugae. Are those through the entire small intestine? Or yes. They go throughout the entire small intestine. They actually, 
they tend to decrease in frequency, but they're throughout the small intestine. So if I ask for folds in your intestine, you say plica. If I ask for folds in your stomach, you say rugae. Make sense? Classic question. Let's keep going then. Let's find some large intestine, a.k.a. colon. Same thing, same place. No matter which one you use. Let's find my colon. Where is my colon? Right here. Okay, so what you want to do on a quiz or test is take your finger and pretend it's poo, all right? You're going to start here. So what is this little sack you're starting in? The cecum with the appendix hanging off. Then you're going to take your finger and go up. So I'm, what kind of colon is this? Ascending. Ascending. Then we make a turn or a flexure. So which flexure would be here? Hepatic, because it's near your liver. It's on your right side. Then we'll go across, which I took off. Transverse. And we'll make a turn or flexure here. Splenic, because my spleen is there. I'm going to go down, descending. Then I make an S curve. Then I straighten out. And then I come out. There you go. You can't miss a colon if you just take your finger and name the way your finger's going. So let's name the white thing, number 528, or 526. What is it? Tinei coli. Tinei coli. means tensioning your colon. It's a little strip that holds it all together and makes these bumpy things. What are the bumpy things called? Hostra. Hostra. Not hosta, that's a plant. This is hostra. So each little bump, those 527s, those are the hostra, so they're called colonic segmentations. By the way, Tinea is the white line. Oh, Tinea coli makes hostra. Where the trivia, the bumps on your poop are right there. Okay? You'll never forget it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Biologists are we're fun at parties, we really are. <laughs> Let's go back and find a, a greater omentum. I just realized there is a, a picture now. <laughs> Number four is your greater omentum. That's the apron that hangs over the intestines from the greater curvature of the stomach. So if you peel that off, the mesentery is the fat within the intestines, but not over them, between them. Little fat apron. That shows the omentum here, and the mesentery like over in there. So we got that, we got that, we got that. Okay, <coughs> now we're stuck basically with some, we don't, we got some teeth, let's do some teeth. Does the omentum just hang, or is it attached? It basically hangs. Okay. I, I was told by a surgeon that hangs, they just pull it up just like you would pull up a shirt. So here's some teeth. You're supposed to know the teeth when you see them. So let's start with teeth number, not number or anything. This one, what kind of tooth is that? It's an incisor. How many would you have as an adult? Two, four. Four. Eight. Eight. Two. Let's count. Uh, Eight, right? There's four and four. All right, so what you want to do for each tooth type is figure out how many you have in your mouth. Take your finger and bite it if you have to, right? Okay, so name this one. Canine, or sometimes called a cuspid, you can do that. This one? Premolar, also called a bicuspid because it has two cups. And this one would be a molar, all right? So you're naming incisor, canine, premolar or bicuspid molar. So then you're supposed to name the areas within it. So let's do that. Everything, like two and three together, the thing you floss and brush, what is that? That's the crown, the thing under the ground? Just like it sounds, right? Under the ground is the root, right? Now, the thing that your teeth live in, what do you call a gum in dentist speak? Gingiva. Gingiva. Let's do number five on that model. What's five made out of? Enamel. Enamel. Good. What is six made out of? Dentin, very good. What do you call eight? The root canal. Yeah, the pulp cavity officially is eight. The root canal is eight A. So they're both the same thing. But this is just the cavity, this is the canal. So a root canal at a dentist, he's drilling out eight A. But isn't the root in it? Yes, it's in the root. But it's just a different name. What do you call the tip of your root canal? The apical foramen. The literally tips whole, right? What do you think lives inside number eight? What do you call the thing inside the cavity? Pulp. So pulp is the stuff, the space is the cavity. This is the canal. 
Make sense? The only thing we left off of our tooth was the periodontal ligament. So what does periodonta mean? Around your tooth. So number seven, this little line here, represents basically the periodontal ligament, what's gluing your tooth into the bone. And that'd be cementum would be the stuff. There's a poster back on the cat that has a very good tooth. Take a picture of it with your phone. It has all these words done very, very well. Make sense on teeth? So no type, no number, no parts. Do the math. Now we're going to go and do liver and pancreas, then we'll do slides. Works good? All right. We'll do... Okay. Let me warn you ahead of time. Every liver in this room is different than every other liver in this room. So if you take a picture of only one, you will fail the liver part of the quiz. Because none of them are alike, even in remotely ways. So unfortunately, you've got to take a picture of every liver and memorize them individually. Because you can't just say it's the thing on the right. Because it won't work. So what you're going to have to do is do some logic. So what you're going to do is figure out, this is the front of the liver. All right, so let's name some parts. What do you call one and two? The lobes. So number one, which lobe is it? Right. The right lobe, left lobe. What do you call number three, the thing between the lobes? Falsiform ligament. So that would go between the two lobes. If it's on the opposite side, it's called the round ligament. They're the same thing. Just if you flip this around, it becomes round on the back of the liver. So if I trip the liver over right here, 508 is what was on the opposite side as falsiform. On the inside, it's called round. This would be the right. This would be the left. They just tipped it up. With me? So then you're going to find the green thing. What's 511? Gallbladder. That's the gallbladder. For all the tubing, you're going to use that as your reference point. Because here's where they vary. On this model, if you look at 512, 512 is a tube between my gallbladder and all this. So what do you call the tube that goes in and out of my gallbladder? The cystic duct. Remember, call a cystokinin. So 512 on this model is a cystic duct. That one you want to find first when you're doing your quiz. Find the cystic duct. And the other ones will also then appear. 506 B and C are in my liver and just come out like that. They're part of the liver. So what do you call 506 A and B? Or B and C, sorry. Those are the right and left hepatic ducts. Some models only have one or the other. This one has both. Yes? Is there a, a different thing that we should be looking for? You said cystic duct? Cystic, cystic duct. Cystic it's under gallbladder, gallbladder, which is on... Next page. Right. So you have cystic duct 512. You have right and left hepatic ducts 506 B and C. Look right here where my finger's pointing. What would you call... That area where B and C meet together. Common. The common what? Not yet. The hepatic duct. So on some models, they only have the common shown. Some they only show the right or the left. This one shows all three. So what, what number is that? Or? It's not numbered. That's the trick. The 506A is numbered. This one comes from those three and has been cut. What is 506A? Common bile duct. So where life gets miserable for you is you have three different names for the same green tubes. Cystic duct is gallbladder tube. Hepatic ducts are the liver tubes, the common bile is where they meet and go down to your small intestine. So on a model of the liver, you want to get your bearings between cystic, which you want to find first. The bile is the one that's always been cut off because it goes to another organ. And then try to negotiate your way around the hepatics. Can you show the bile? I just can't. I'm not sure Let me flip this over. Did you Hold flip on. it all the way over? I can try. Flip Let it. me see. Uh, I, flip it. Uh, I just flipped it up. Let me see. So was the first one we were looking at, would that have been considered anterior? Yes. Or this is posterior? This is anterior. And all I'm doing is, is flip this up in, in situ to make it look like that. Okay. It's still anatomically correct. You're just looking up from the bottom. Trying to think. I don't think I have a model on this page that actually shows them all three together. The board so boys show them all. That right there? Yes. Okay. 
That looks about right. So let's do some more math here. So the blue things at the bottom of the liver next to the green things, what are those going to be? Veins, which one? That's the portal vein, comes in the bottom of the liver. Where would I find the hepatic vein? On the top of the liver. You can't see it, it's on the opposite side. So the portal comes in the bottom, the hepatic comes out the top. This big blue thing here, what's that, Smarties? It's the vena cava, inferior vena cava. So as you can get the gist, you're going to have to spend a lot of time on the liver, more so than you think. Because every liver varies in how they put these pieces and color them and label them. Spend time now. <clears throat> Otherwise, life will be miserable for you. Let's do the pancreas. Much easier. Let's do a pancreas. Here's one. Find the fish bone. Think of naming a fish. What do you call this long part of a fish? A tail. A tail. What do you call the middle part of a fish? Body. A body. What do you think you call the front part of a fish? A head. What do you call this little thing right here? Well, neck would work, or you're also called the notch. You'll have neck or notch. You're kind of the same spot. So what do you call the fish bone, number one? The pancreatic duct. Pancreatic duct, also called the duct of Rostung. So then what do you call number two? The accessory, the accessory duct, or the duct of Santorini. So everybody will have a number one. This will be a pancreatic duct, or the major pancreatic duct. Not every model shows number two, the accessory duct. And so they have crazy looking stuff. But find the fish bone, and that's your naming the fish. Make sense? That's the pancreas. So now I'm going to just walk you through quickly the histology, because that's where more pain will be. You're going to go to J Doc. You're going to bring up some J Doc here. Okay, so what you want to do on all your slides is break it down for us to the trees. You want to name the organ first, and then after you know what organ it is, then break down further. Because if you don't know what organ it is, you're just going to fail. All right? So, I'm going to randomly put a slide up there that you do not know, but you'll know what to do. And I'm going to ask you what organ that is. And you're going to say what? Please don't say small intestine, no. Don't say large intestine, don't say stomach. The esophagus, that's the one I want you to say. How do I know that's an esophagus? No. That's true, but that's not what I would look for. Okay, let's find our layers. The white space is what? This is what? This is what? These are what? Ex muscularis externa, right? Adventitia. So the trick is to look at the mucosa in all these slides. What tissue is that from 231, third, second week of class? In your esophagus. Stratified squamous. If you see stratified squamous, the Dorito effect, you know it has to be a mouth or an esophagus. Well, that sure isn't a mouth. That's going to be my esophagus. It has to protect me from the Doritos ripping their way down my esophagus. If you see stratified squamous, you're done. You know that's an esophagus and or a mouth. It's multiple layers protection on an edge. That was 231 you learned that, right? So you're going to look at the mucosa and say that's stratified squamous, I'm an esophagus, I'm out of here. Right? It's only later that you worry about all the other stuff. So what we're going to do now, we're going to show you another slide. Name the organ. Esophagus. I hear one lone voice in the wilderness right here. What was it? Esophagus. Esophagus again. It's the same slide. Stratified squamous epithelial tissue, non keratinized. Right? This shouldn't have been hard. Lumen, mucosa's multiple layers, flattened cells on an edge, that's esophagus. I just got that telling you that. <laughs> that's mucosa, because this is submucosa here. Yeah. So it's the same slide. I know which one to put on your test now. You can't figure out esophagus, it'll be killing. 
Alright, now we're going to try this one. This is not an esophagus. <laughs> How do you know that's not an esophagus? No. That's not stratified squamous anything, right? In fact, if you look, that's actually like a cuboidal kind of cell. Right? So this is going to be the stomach. The way you tell a stomach is it has these long white kind of lines with these long red things. It looks feathery, wispy, indeterminate. Those are called your gastric pits or the holes in the top. And these are your gastric glands or the things at the bottom. That's where all the secretions come in and out of for your stomach. If you look at these long kind of feathery stripes, that's a stomach. So it's not stratified squamous, right? It just looks like kind of this weird kind of abstract looking thing. Okay? So the, the pits formally are the top part of each one. So I would argue these are the pits. Down here, where they get darker, these are the glands. That's where you're making the stuff. You can't really easily see it line on every slide. But the pits are the top, the glands are the bottom. Yes. The, the pits would be the white space. That's where the fluid is. So formally, the, the white area. So I'll show you another view. All right. So here are my pits, the white areas. Here are my glands, these areas that are darker down here. This is a stomach. Looks like feathers. Wispy bamboo kind of thing. Make sense? So it's not an esophagus. Alright, so now let's make it a little difficult for you. Right, turn that off. <coughs> that is also a stomach. Just a different region. This is the pyloric region, but you don't have to know that. But how would I know that's still not an esophagus? It's not stratified squamous. I can still see the, the white lines going down and sort of the the little circles down here, those are still my pits and glands. They just look a little different in this region of the stomach. So which, which are the glands? Sorry. The glands would be basically everything about here. Like the purple, the darker part. Yeah, the, the darker area at the bottom. Okay. The pits would be the openings at the top. You're looking for this kind of feathery linearity, for lack of a better way to phrase it. Okay? Keep that picture in your head. So focus that. Put that in your head. Now you're going to see the big difference in the next slide. You can't miss this one, but you can. Show you this one. Oh, yeah, it looks like guinea, but it's not. I see goblet cells. And what do I see here? What's that look like? Looks like fingers, right? Those. That's a small intestine because intestines have villi, which are fingers. These are fingers. These are not the feathers. So if it actually looks like there's big space around them, that's a small intestine. So a small intestine has fingers. A stomach has feathers. Here's a stomach. Feathery. Here's a small intestine. Fingery. Make sense? So they have a similar anatomy, but they're very different how they look. What is the blue on there? Those are the goblet cells, in this case. These ones? Those are the goblet cells. But another good distinction also. Right. right. So they may be clear, they may be dark, but they're there. So let's figure out what we have. So we have our villi. So muc lumen would be the white, mucosa, submucosa, the muscularis is down here. Right? But you're supposed to know which region of the small intestine you are in. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to take this away. Put this up. Okay, so is this a small intestine? Mm. So yes. yes. How do I know that? Fingers. I see fingers, very distinct fingers with goblet cells. That's your clue it's small intestine. Oh. So then your choice is, is this a duodenum or is this an ileum? Well, since you probably don't know. Well, you duodenum. See goblet the goblet cells would be anywhere. It's a higher higher yeah, but that one's just there for last. That's not actually distinctive. Okay, so what you're going to do when you know it's a small intestine, you're going to take your eyeball and you're going to go all the way down to the submucosa, which is under this red line. And you look in here. What are these things here? If this was a trachea, what would you say those were? 
glands. So these are glands. So if you look on your sheet, these are called duodenal glands, also called the glands of Brunner. So if these are duodenal glands, this must be from your duodenum. So the duodenum will have fingers and glands every time. If you see fingers and glands, you are duodenum by definition. Right? So let me show you another picture, which I'm not making this up. My fingers are up there. This is my submucosa. Do I see glands? Yeah. I do. Is this, what is this then? Duodenum. If you see the word crypt, which you do, the crypts are these circles above the line in the mucosa. So crypts are in the mucosa. They don't count. Glands are in the submucosa. They count. So these are submucosa or glands of Brunner. These are crypts. They don't matter. Right? So you go to that red line below the mucosa and you look in the glands. So this is duodenum. Fingers and glands. But the, the is, is on our wrist, so. It is, but they don't count in terms of identifying which region you're in. Oh. So here's a close-up. Duodenal glands. Below the red line. Crips above the red line. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you this question. Here's a picture. Those are fingers. Is this a duodenum? No. How did you know it was not a duodenum? I don't see any glands down here. I see fingers, I see crypts, I don't see glands. It can't be a duodenum. Because a duodenum would have to have glands down here. So that's your clue for duodenum. So it has to have glands. So let's do our next one. Which I'll take you to a different website. But, but this one for now. Is this a duodenum? Yeah. No. no. Because the line is here. There's no, there's no glands over here. These are crypts, not glands. This one actually is jejunum, but you don't have to know that from that. What do you mean by that? We don't have to know that. You don't have to know jejunum when you see it. You have to know ileum. Yeah, so I'll have to go to a different website to show you ileum. But I'm going to keep going on this one, then I'll go back. So you're looking for fingers and the glands. Okay? Now we're going to go to the large intestine. Okay, we're look at it. You will love this slide. What do you see? Yeah, it looks kind of like a stomach, kind of, right? Okay, the trick is it looks like your fingers are held together. So instead of doing fingers, you do like this. There's no space. And what are these white things all over the map? What are they? They're goblet cells, and there's a lot of them. So you gotta think that poop is slimy, right? So these are slimy little fingers. That's how you know a large intestine. The fingers are together, there's lots of mucus. But isn't that the one that only, uh, like, uh, absorbs like 10% of the water? That's right. And that's, so therefore, that's why it needs all that. Those right. That's right. So it keeps things sliding along. But you're gonna put fingers are together, right? So what you're going to look for between the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine is if their fingers are feathers, and how much space there is between them, and if you have the glands or not. Those are the things you're going to pin out of these pictures. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through randomly to a different website. So first off, name the organ. Very good. Small intestine. And you need that because I see fingers, right? Okay. So now, if it is a small intestine, which region is it? How did you know that? Glands and submucosa. I know that has to be duodenum. I have fingers and glands. Right? Very good. So that's your clue. Fingers, then glands. Very easy. Not, because large intestine wouldn't have any space at all. There's goblet cells, but there's not... I see goblet cells, but I don't see as many as you think. There's lines between them, so I have fingers. But I don't see any glands. So what regions would have fingers but no glands? This would be the ileum. So it's the only one you have to identify that does not have the glands. Another trick to an ileum, this is a whole cut. You see anything weird on this, perhaps? These? What are those big black circles? Pyres patches. Those are lymph nodes. 
And the alien will have a lot of them. So if you see big circles of purple, those are Pyre's patches. That would also be in the ilium, much more so than the Lodna. So you can see fingers, no glands, and maybe a Pyre's patch. Let me see if I have another one. Can you see Do you see a Pyre's patch on this slide? Top left. Top left. Here's my big purple circle. That's a lymph node, basically. So I see fingers, I don't see glands, I see a Pyre's patch. So that would be an ilium as well. So you're going to see a little different shape. But they're there. Let's try another one. I'm going to hit you with something. Oh, I know which one. Ha <laughs> ha! Right. I heard one voice in the wilderness. Esophagus. Esophagus. Try to find small mess up in the tissue. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Walk away. Don't make it harder than see. What organ is this? Those aren't really fingers. That's a stomach. These are the pits. And notice they go all the way down to here. These are the glands way down here. But those aren't really a finger so much as little white lines going up and down. So this is the pits and the glands. They look like fingers, kind of, but they're not exactly the same. Which one are the glands? The glands are down here. The pits are up there. It looks vaguely like one. Here's a close-up. Those would be the pits and the glands. Pits at the top, glands at the bottom. But they're not really fingered like a small intestine's finger. You can't really discern that. Again, look feathery. So it's, it's, that's the large intestine. So you can argue, well, it looks like a stomach. Yeah, but these look more like fat fingers and feathers. I don't see that pit gland thing. I don't see glands here. I see lots and lots of goblet cells everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Poop is slimy. Fingers together, poop is slimy. Right, so that's a large intestine. So you're looking at the goblet cells, the shape of the fingers. Here's another picture of it. So just, it looks different than a stomach. So you have to practice flipping from one to the other to get the general feel for each one. As you move through the organ, they start to change shape as you get near the end. Yes? Look, that's, that, that's a large intestine, right? On the right, uh-huh. On the right, well, so the large intestine, so how do we know if it's not the node, if it's ascending? Trend? Nope, just large intestine, you're done. Oh, okay. By the way, that's your anus on the left. Oh. Try to find Here's one of the two slides that will flunk you, because these two slides are almost exactly the same to your eye. You have to get them right. Can someone tell me the organ here? Pancreas. It's the pancreas. And how did you know that from 232? Eyelid of Langerhans. Eyelid of Langerhans, right? Pancreas. So you're looking for those off-colored areas of the eyelid of Langerhans. And then you also learned last term what the non-eyelid was. Pancreatic acini. Acini or actinar or exocrine. They're all the same. So if you see these areas, that's the eyelid of Langerhans. So it makes it a pancreas. Everything else is acini or the actinar or... Make sense of pancreas? Okay, the one that you're going to confuse with it, I guarantee half of you will, not because I want it to, but that's just the way it comes out, is its friend, Mr. Liver. Let's find Mr. Liver and realize they look almost the same. They're pink blotches. <clears throat> the trick with the liver is it's missing something. What do you not see? I don't see any discolorations. I don't see an eyelid of Langerhans. So your first guess is to look for the eyelids. The second thing you want to look at is this structure here. If you close your eye and, and pretend, this looks like you're looking down like at Crater Lake, right? And there's all these rivers that run out like spokes on a wheel from the center. Looks like a volcano. Looks like a volcano, Mount St. Helens, right here. Here's one here. It looks like these lines are radiating out from the center. So if you look at this dark line, and imagine you're a drunk Roman or a beekeeper, it makes like a honeycomb shape. That is called a lobule. So the liver has these honeycombs with these center volcanoes surrounding it. Here's a lobule. Here's a lobule. Here's a lobule. Here's a lobule. So the liver's going to have these volcanoes every once in a while making a lobule. The pancreas does not. Hmm? Uh, 
you shouldn't. I think what happened here is there should be a line about here. Because you wouldn't have two, to my knowledge. There might be two, but... Is there a way that they cut it? Yeah, so it could be just the way they cut it. Let me get you a different picture. So you're looking for spokes on a wheel. Can you find spokes on a wheel? Kind of. So here's a lobule. Here's the center. It looks like all the mud is sliding down. Okay, so your liver is going to have pink, but no eyelets with these lobules. The hard part is seeing that difference, because they all look they all look pink, they all look the same. So let's go through it. The lobules are these. In the corner of each lobule, like here, you'll see three things. So how do you call a group of three? A triad. A triad. You want to say portal triad. And you have to know the three things. You won't be able to see it necessarily, but you have to know the three things in a triad. So each corner, there should be three things at each corner, but the only one of them shows it right here. Okay? Then what do you call the white spaces where the water would run or the snow would fall? Sinusoids, sinuses, right? What do you call the volcano in the center? The central veins. The central veins, the volcano. The sinusoids are the white lines as the water's running out. Can you guess what the red things are called if they're in a liver? Hepatocytes, so they're liver cells. Okay? You can't see Kupner cells on the slide, so know what they do. They're a white blood cell, but you can't see them. Right? So let me show you some more liver slides. Here's a close up of a central vein. So this is the volcano. What's this red thing here? Hepatocyte. What's that white thing there? Sinusoids. You're looking at the, the mountain spreading out, right? The problem is your slides are notoriously bad at showing those. So you're going to have to try really hard to look at the different liver slide and the pancreas slide and try to discern them because they're very similar in color, texture, everything. Name it. Claim it. Pancreas, right? Islet of Langerhans. But they're the same color. Who cares? I can still make out the islets, right? They're different. So Islet of Langerhans. Liver. You sure? Yeah. How are you sure? Right. First, there's no islets, right? I can kind of visualize that volcano effect. Even though I can't see the center of the volcano, I can kind of visualize, you know, water dripping off these mountains, right? So no islets, and I see the lobules. So liver. But notice they're the same color as each other, same pattern, but makes life miserable for you. Thank you. Daniel, yes, pancreatic islet of lung runs. Right. So, from my experience doing this class, the liver and the pancreas are two slides that are notoriously screwed up because they're very, very similar. The liver models honestly flunk more people than any other model on this quiz. So, you want to spend time with liver slide, liver model, and pancreas slide more than anything else. Right. And the intestines on the slides, getting them which ones which. Make sense. The rest of it, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. So use your time wisely. Open lab begins at four. Okay. So the pancreas, just find the fishbone. Right. So tail, head would be here. Notch would be that. This is kind of neck. Then the major or main pancreatic duct would be the fishbone. The upper one is the accessory duct. And this comes out at that bump in your small intestines. That would be where the major duodenal papilla would be, with the big duct coming out. And the bile duct comes out of here and comes out at the same spot. They just don't show up. Mm -hmm. okay. So anatomically, right? Hang on. Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in here. Cut! Take two! Yes, <laughs> she actually looked right over him. Okay, thanks. Okay, ready? So start this way. So right and left with a false form ligament. Right, left. Right, left. So I flip it over. I still have right and left with my round ligament on this side. So then when I look at this, find the gallbladder. The tube from the gallbladder is a cystic duct. The tube that's branching from that in the liver itself is the hepatic duct. This one has only one. So you'd call that common, I guess. The one that comes out of that downwards and is cut, that's the common bile duct. On this model, which is the same as online, cystic duct would be here. 
<laughs> right and left hip paddocks were there. Common hip paddock is here. Common bile is there. On this model, cystic is here. Right and left hip paddock are there. Common hip paddock is here. Common bile is there. On this model, Cystic is here. In here, I have no idea clearly what they're looking at, but I, I want to say that's the right and that's the left hepatic, and then common bile would be here. So if you kind of do the right and left thing, it's the easiest plan. Then there's more! Because on the bottom of the liver, the blue or purple one, that's going to be your hepatic portal vein on this side, inferior vena cava this side. Then you're going to have your hepatic artery here. On this model, though, you have your hepatic portal vein here. Your hepatic vein is there. On this model, your hepatic portal is purple. Your hepatic is the blue. Over here, joining the inferior vena cava. On this model, hepatic portal is gray, and there's no hepatic because it's behind the board. And that's what you get. I'll be darned. I'll be darned too.